What's up guys, it's Jake here from Chief Live Gaming today, part two of the 100 Orc Challenge video series. So, uh, this is a, a, a series, in case you guys maybe missed part one, I'm going to link that in the uh, description. Go check that out there. To summarize real quick, this whole series is about painting these 100 Orcs that you're looking at right here as quickly as efficiently as possible to a, a good solid tabletop standard. We're not going for something crazy detailed here, but we want them to look nice. We want to feel good about playing these in maybe an event or a tournament or something. Uh, but, you know, we don't want to spend a ton of time on these, uh, as painting infantry can be quite tedious. So, the way I like to think about painting mass infantry like this is in stages. So if we have your unfinished models, say, imagine a, a little scale here on the screen. On the left side of the screen, on the scale, we're, we're not even started yet, we're just beginning the models. And on the right side of the screen, at the end of the little scale we're thinking of here, the models are completed. I like to think of, uh, of stages. So stage one is somewhere in the middle of this scale. And that's where all these models are painted to right here that you can see. They are, you know, they're, they're done, air quotes. Uh, they are usable, they are playable, they are tabletop standard, but they are not quite completed. So I like to think of them as stage one. Uh, to, to sort of summarize stage one, again, I cover this in detail in, in part one of the video, how to get these models to this point. Uh, we did four quick steps. We base coated them in a tan primer color. And then we used uh, two different washes to tint the skin and leather areas of the minis by using washes and glazes instead of actually base coating with paints. We're getting a lot of bang for our buck by uh, allowing that wash to pool and give us some shading as well as painting that tan into a different color at the same time uh, kind of taking care of a few different things at once and as well as being very very fast so steps two and three two and three here we're doing the uh, the washes the brown wash or sepia wash on the leather and then the green wash on the skin our final step for stage one was to base coat all of the metallics here that you can see in a black metal, a very dark metallic color. And that's just to uh, set the, st uh, the groundwork rather for later in the painting process to uh, give us a lot of, again, bang for a buck or efficiency. So that summarizes where we went to with stage one. Additionally, what I did was I based all the models right away just so I could get them on the table, uh, not necessary to do that right away just something I went ahead and uh, took care of I know a lot of you guys uh, messaging me and, and commenting in videos were curious about how long that actually took me to get all these models to stage one uh, if we don't count the basing all of these models here took me about 14 hours from where you saw in that last video so not including the basing 14 hours another few probably two and a half to three hours to base all of these models uh, basing. I'm, I'm very slow with basing. Uh, so you may notice there are a few adjustments from the, the of the actual models since the last video. As I was doing this uh, doing this painting I realized that I didn't I already had 40 boys painted and I didn't really need another 40 right away so I just painted 20 which you can see back there and then subbed in some more knobs and things like um, the the orcs that are on the vehicles that I have right here. So we still have a hundred, they're just a little different. Now, what I want to do is show you guys how I would go about sort of finishing these models and wrapping them up. So this will be, again, we, we think about that scale. We're over here in stage one right now as you look at these. We want to bring them over to stage two or completed and then get them totally wrapped up so we're done with them or at least get them a little further along the scale. If you guys are, you know, like me, you like to you like to keep painting something and they're, they're never really considered finished. You always are adding to your collections. Um, that's how I like to paint, but at least, you know, we're, we're pushing the models a little closer to that end spectrum where we want to be. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust the camera angle and come back to you guys in just a second. Okay guys, here we are. So I mentioned earlier we left off at step four the total amount of steps that we're going to need to do to get to stage two or completed is going to be 11 steps. So we're looking at seven more 
if my math is correct, to bring the model up to something like this. Now hopefully the light, let me just kick this guy over a little bit. will allow you to see, maybe we'll even zoom in right here on this guy. So this is what we're going for as a stage two model. Just to give you guys a look. So if we pick up just a normal boy here, on the left you see stage one, on the right stage two. So just uh, basically highlighting, bringing out some of the detail work, and finishing these models off. Uh, now arguably this guy over here looks phenomenal. Uh, I would say that certain parts of this model may look better than certain parts of this model depending on your style, depending on your preference. So feel free of course to adapt my steps, my scheme uh, to your own personal taste and uh, I'll kind of talk about that as we look through the steps. So here's where we were, right? Stage one, work boy. The next thing we need to do is sort of finish these models off. The biggest thing you may notice is we didn't do anything to the face here and that's very distracting that's very a very important part of any miniatures to make sure the face is completed and the detail work is taken care of because that's one of the first things that you're going to look at when you pick up the model and, and kind of look at the model so first thing we want to do is hit the teeth now I'm using model color ivory by Vallejo this is a, a off-white sort of a tan white color now this is much too white for orc teeth. I think they would be dirty and nasty and uh, kind of gross. So what I do from there is I wash it with brown. Uh, this is the, the same brown or sepia wash that I used on the armor. I just thinned it down a little bit so that it would give us kind of a, a less harsh tint to the, the white and kind of make an off brown sort of gross colored teeth uh, tooth rather teeth? You know what I'm saying. To these orc boys. Now, you could just paint them in a tan, but I find that using a lighter color and then a wash gives you a little more definition and a little more variation and, and just looks more finished. So that was two more steps there. Now again, these, these, these are a lot of steps. We're looking at six more, but they're all very, very fast. You know, picking out the teeth with the ivory takes a few seconds, washing it takes even less time. So we're done with the teeth. Real quick, we want to hit the eyes. So this is Citadel's Evil Sun's Scarlet, just a nice red. If you mess up and hit the outsides of the eyes, don't worry, just tell people it's OSL, the eyes are glowing. You don't need to be too concerned about that. Just try to be as neat as you can. Again, we're going for speed here. So the eyes are done. That was step seven. Step eight, we want to dry brush this leather and get it highlighted a little bit, as well as the metal parts. So I did uh, both of these steps here, and I wanted to, to kind of illustrate to you guys that even if you are newer to dry brushing or in a, in a hurry and want to do more of a, they call it overbrushing, or where you load your brush up really heavy and kind of just go for speed, Rather than um, rather than neatness, you can see here I went very heavy with this dry brush on the leather. Again, we're using the same color as the teeth, just this ivory color, just to save some time and and stay efficient. I went again a lot more heavy on this orc just to illustrate to you guys. It still looks pretty cool, right? Not too bad. The leather is highlighted, and again, if we take a look at that first orc boy. This looks really good as well. It just kind of depends on how you want your your models to look. I find that if you highlight the rest of the model and don't highlight the leather, it sticks out and doesn't work very well, so that's why I highlighted it, but um, I really like this color without the highlights too, so it's hard to say. Now for the metal, we're dry brushing with Vallejo Model Air Steel. This is another metallic. It's very, very bright metallic. 
Again, this is one of the main reasons why I wanted to go so dark with the original base coat was so that when we dry brushed with this metallic, it really pops and gives us a really cool worn look. Dry brushing is awesome here because they are uh, Oryx, you know, they're not the neatest models. They're kind of battle worn, sort of uh, with their, their metallic, so it's, it looks like it's a little scratchy and uh, a little beat up, so it's, it's a perfect effect for Oryx. I think those metallics look fantastic. So from there, really, we're looking to finish the skin. Now this is a very subtle step for me. This is again a, a big preference thing. I took Necrotic Flesh, this is Army Painter. It's kind of a pea green, a weird pukey color. I don't really know how to describe it. <laughs> it's a gross color, Necrotic Flesh like a green mixed with yellow mixed with white sort of thing and I dry brushed all the skin so again very subtle let's take a look at the original skin color versus this skin color it's just very slightly brighter uh, this I don't know if I'm gonna stick with this color I kind of want my skin to be a little more uh, towards this side of things and less kind of neon -y green uh, I also think that you could do a yellow like a, a yellow, more yellow with a lighter dry brush over this to get some cool tones. You could do another green, like almost a neon green. And honestly guys, the skin looks awesome just like this. You don't even need to touch it if you don't want to. Just kind of an experiment for me. Play around with it. You know, orcs are going to have different shades, different colors of skin, as you may imagine throughout their wa or throughout their clan. So having, say, your knobs be one shade or one tone, and then your orc boys be a different tone of green for their skin is not out of the question. It's kind of cool to have different colors of orc skin throughout your, your force. So the last thing I did, set this guy down. As you might notice here, we've got a few gold bits, like uh, the earring, the bullet there, the casing, and then the earring on this side. Just hit those really quickly with a, a gold metallic. I think I used, can't remember, um, Vallejo copper. I don't have it over here, but it's just a darker metallic. Optional step, just to add a little more detail. Uh, you can see that this model looks pretty cool with the basing. Uh, I feel like as a whole, the force is gonna look awesome with them painted to this level. I know a lot of you guys have the want for more of a, a, a color in your forest. You know, there's a lot of orc uh, clans that have yellow or red or uh, blue, you know, throughout their, their color, uh, their clan color throughout their armor and stuff. So this is probably the time where you can hit certain areas of the model with that color, like the bolter or the, the slugger, excuse me. Uh, casings, this little mark here, you could hit with the clan color, the vest, uh, maybe a shoulder pad. There are certain things you can do to help designate your squads. So if you've got a hundred boys, you know, each group of 20 or 30 can have a different colored vest or something to help you distinguish them from other boys and help your opponent to understand where the groups are on the battlefield. Certain things like that, just sort of quality of life things for your orcs. Uh, now would be the time to take care of that. So there we are guys um, I'm trying to think here the, the basing I should probably talk about is just PVA or, or Elmer's or white glue with some flock thrown over that let that dry some you put little puddles of flock uh, of glue down and then put grass flock over that and you get that sort of splotchy grass look it's very important to hit the edges of your base with black afterwards to get that nice uh, sort of black defined edge. I find that makes a huge difference in the overall look of your army versus just leaving the bases and not hitting them with that black. So let's move the old tripod back here. Set up for you guys as we close out the video. There it is, guys. 100 orcs to stage one.
I will have a, uh, a part three of this video at some point. I'm a little burned out from painting these orc infantry models for the time being, so part three may be months away, but at some point I will update you guys again on this sort of infantry part of the collection. I'm also going to release a orc collection overview for my entire orc army. I want to talk about my plans moving into 8th edition, which is a couple weeks out at the time of this video, and sort of just show you where the collection sits right now. I like to periodically do updates on those, on my different armies and my different collections from time to time. So uh, be sure to check out that video if you are an orc fanatic and want more and more orc content than you can get your hands on. So I also want to take a second to mention my Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. If you guys like what I do, want to see more of it, those are great ways to do that. If you're even more motivated to support the channel, I do have a Patreon. If you want to see more videos, have access to monthly giveaways, and more exclusive content, head over to Patreon and consider pledging and just check it out over there. I'm trying to get more uh, involved with Patreon so that I can put out more content for you guys and just get more more involved with the community. It's a great thing for content creators. So, if you guys have any additional questions, always feel free down below in the comment section. Let me know how you're doing with your orc collection, if you've adapted this strategy for any other models, any other armies. Love to hear it, and be sure to talk about it in the comment section because others might be interested in hearing your experience and using it for themselves. So, big thanks again, guys. Hope you have a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye now.